AI is no longer an experiment in banks. It's now embedded in lending, fraud detection, KYC, AML, collections, customer service, and even treasury operations. But with this explosion comes a new problem. AI risk no longer sits only with the CISO or CIO. They sit squarely at the board's table. AI create strategy, operational, ethical, compliance and reputational risks. The regulators are tightening globally, whether it is the DPDP Act of 2023 or EU AI Act or from Mars or from RBI regulations. BFSI must move from AI adoption to AI assurance and AI governance. AI governance is now a business risk, not a IT topic. Banks are different from tech companies. When bank use AI, a model failure can cause regulatory fines, systemic financial disruption or discrimination in lending decisions. This makes AI governance a non-negotiable leadership responsibility. AI failures include financial loss, biases, denial of service, AML gaps or fraud. The reputational cost is wherein if the bank is perceived as using unfair AI would cause a collapse of trust associated with it. There are raising regulatory expectations, whether it's EU AI Act or DPDP or RBI's digital lending norms. CXOs are accountable. The CROs, the CIOs, the CISOs, the CDOs or the CEO, everyone is touched by this. There is no escape. The top risk today of AI in BFSI are model biases, explainability failures, data leakage, regulatory breaches, cyber manipulation of models or adversarial attacks. Now let's walk through the eight pillars model created specifically for the BFSI CXO. Pillar one is AI strategy and risk appetite. It defines acceptable risk for AI, aligning with business strategy and defining high risk AI use cases. That's pillar one. Pillar two is about AI governance structure. In here, you need to have the AI governance committee, the roles of CEO, CRO, CIO, CISO, CDO and model owners need to be defined and accountability and approval process need to be articulated and documented. The third is AI policies and standards. We need to define the AI acceptable use policies. We need to define the model life cycle standards. We need to define the data governance structure and show alignment to the DPDP and EU AI Act. That's pillar three. Pillar four is about model life cycle governance or end to end model life cycle. In here, the model design, the training mechanism, the validation mechanism, the deployment process and the monitoring methods, methodology needs to be articulated. You need to have an independent validation and it is not optional, it's mandatory. And you need to, you need to have a mechanism 
to monitor any drift and that too on a continuous basis. The next pillar is data governance of our AI. Here you need to classify the data sets, remove any PII where possible. You need to be in compliance with the DPDP Act. You need to ensure the data quality issues are addressed, specifically the outcome arising from if there are any biases. Pillar 6 is about AI testing, explainability and traceability. You need to test for, at this point, you need to test for biases, fairness aspect, drifts and adverse real risk. You need to have an explainability structure in place, which is one of the most essential one from a lending perspective. You need to have logging and versioning structure in place, a mechanism and a very clear audit trail. So that's an explainability requirement in BFSI. The seventh pillar is from AI security and adversarial testing perspective. You need to test for prompt injections, model extraction, data poisoning and adverse real ML attacks or on fraud engines. So that's pillar 7. Pillar 8 is about AI regulatory and compliance alignment. Here you need to ensure that you are aligned to the EU AI Act, the DPDP Act of 2023 and RBI compliance requirement whether it is DL, KYC or AML and ISO 42001 which is AI management systems. You need to create a regulation heat map for AI in BFSI. Let's look at the CXO operating model for AI governance. At level 1, which is the board and the CEO level, you need to ensure that you have approved your AI risk appetite. You need to ensure independence of model validation. You need to review at least quarterly all the AI risk report. That's level 1. At level 2, you have the CXO layers, wherein the CRO is accountable for AI model risk, the CIO for architecture and cloud control, CISO for AI security and adversarial testing, the CDO is accountable for data quality and lineage, and COO for process risk. These need to be clearly articulated, documented, RASI need to be built up, clear expectations need to be agreed upon, it could be demonstrated when asked for by regulators or an auditor. Level 3 is execution layer. Here you have the model developers, ML engineers, data engineers, risk analysts and internal audit. All of the roles, the responsibilities, the RACIs, in scope and out of scope need to be agreed and documented and ready for any demonstration and evidence need to be available so that it can be provided when a review or investigations are done. So that's your three level of AI governance model. Let's look at the implementation roadmap. The implementation roadmap is can be for 6, 12, 18 months depending on the size of the organization. Phase 1 is building your AI inventory. Phase 2 is classifying what which are the high risk models. Phase 3 is about implementing testing and validation mechanism. Phase 4 is defining your governance workflow. And phase 5 is to create board dashboards. In conclusion, AI can accelerate BFSI growth or create existential risk. The difference lies in whether you have a mature AI governance program or not. Board must treat AI risk same as operational and cyber risk. 
AI governance is actually equal to trust, compliance, and resilience. I hope this has provided you your top view on how AI governance on BFSI can be navigated from a CXO perspective. We will now move to the next presentation video which would be on zero trust aspect for BFSI. The closing of this is your host Savit Vittal Salian Namaskar